Alrighty. Hey gang. Welcome back. So today I would like to talk to you guys about mortar. Um, seems like that's one of the main questions I get when people are building my cook stoves and, and just really any rocket stove. So I thought I'd go over some of that with you guys. Uh, before I do, I just want to talk real quick about my plans. As you guys know, um, I've got plans on my Walker Stoves website for my cook stoves. And I just wanted to announce a new one that I just uh, released a week ago or so. And I call it the Continental Cook Stove. It's, it was a custom design for a really nice fella in Italy named Ian. Uh, thank you, Ian. And what it is, is it is a refined version of the tiny cook stove. In other words, it uses the ceramic fiber uh, riserless core. That allows you to put the firebox a little higher off the floor than in the full masonry cook stove, so easier loading and allows to get a, maybe get a little more mass to a smaller footprint. Now the Continental Cook Stove is a full-size cook stove. It's about the same size as the full masonry cook stove, but it features a hot baking oven that can be either a white or black oven depending on your goals. So a black oven is one where the flue gases go through it and touch the food so you would use that for like smoking meats or, or roasts and I prefer those. I like to put my things that I don't want in the smoke into a covered roaster inside that large oven. But in this case I found a commercially available, uh, you can just buy it online, um, black oven insert cast iron with a nice door as well. So you have the option of either a nice cast iron door and a big large roasting oven or a white oven for baking bread and things like that. It's in a spot where it'll be nice and hot for that as well. So the Continental Cook Stove is really just the tiny stove sized up, full size oven, but one of the main things is I tried to eliminate all of the hardware fabrication. So it uses commercially available doors, firebox door, oven door, like I said, ins oven insert if you desire. Um, that makes it really easy to get a really nice finish on that stove. Um, it will cost more to build. So where the tiny stove, I estimate somewhere between $800 and $1,000 to build, Continental Cook Stove is probably in the neighborhood of twice that once you add the hardware and the custom cast iron hardware. So the other thing I did with that one is I sized the bricks to just the Home Depot size bricks for the US version and the Italian bricks for the European version. Um, so they are designed with the idea that the material will be easy to get and easy to source. So yeah, that pretty much covers it. They all, you know, all the cook stoves, the full, the tiny, the continental. Real quick, I should just go over those. The full was the first one I built, right? It has the riserless core, but it's built out of kiln bricks or insulated fire bricks. So that one's an easy one to build if you would want to salvage um, most of your materials. You can build it very inexpensively. You do have to fabricate doors. The tiny cook stove was me, uh, my next iteration, which was the riserless core built out of ceram ceramic fiberboard, which like I said, allows you to get the firebox higher so that you could have an oven below. And in that one, I was going for the tiniest footprint, the smallest footprint I could. So that's the tiny masonry cook stove. And the last one, as they just talked about, is the Continental. They're all roughly the same in terms of output power. Uh, they're all super efficient, more efficient than I think any wood stove on the market. They um, test uh, consistently close to 90% efficiency. Um, so that covers the cook stoves. So anyways, hey, let's go into mortar, you guys. So, you know, I get a lot of questions on mortar. And a lot of people commonly and and understandably want to know if it's going to be stronger if they add in some Portland cement or use an off-the-shelf uh, lime-based mortar mix um, or should they add some furnace cement or should they just use furnace cement or should they purchase a refractory mortar you know and I understand you know I m the plans and and in my videos I always talk about just using clay and sand and when you haven't done it, you haven't lived with it for a long time, it sure sounds weak and it sure does seem like you would want to use something more robust. But in my experience, the clay sand mortar is really the ultimate mortar and for a lot of reasons. So if you're salvaging all your materials, you can source it at home. I'm going to show you how to use bagged materials, but you can source it at home. You just need to screen the pebbles out and the rocks and the sticks. Um, but most people can source clay and sand. Uh, so it's inexpensive. The other thing I really like about it is it's inert. You know, you can just dive in with no gloves and, um, you know, get it on all over you, which you tend to do, and no harm, no foul, right? The um, 
furnace cements, the lime based, and the Portland, you know, they all are caustic. And so um, that's something that I really appreciate about the clay sand mortar. Now, those aren't enough reasons to, to not use the other ones if the other ones were better, but I don't think they are, and here's why, is, is even though they're built to withstand heat, the other mortars set up hard and they expand and contract at different rates than your bricks do. They also tend to bond really, really strongly to those bricks. So what that means is the weakest point is usually the mortar itself. And what you'll end up with, in my experience, is as those bricks and, all, and the mortar and everything else shrinks and expands in those heating and cooling cycles, and it happens, you know, every day, all day, all winter long. So it's a lot of heating and cooling and expanding and contracting, and especially if you have a double wall. Now, all my stoves are, are single skin uh, because I find they're easier to build to maintain. Oddly enough, you would think the doubles were more durable, but they create some more issues because of the different rates of motion of the materials. So at any rate, I don't need to go too far down that road, but the point is, is the mortars that set up hard will usually fail within the mortar joint itself and be stuck to the bricks. So you'll end up with cracks. You'll end up with cracks you can't really fill and when you take it all apart to fix it, your bricks are wrecked. They're not wrecked, but it's a lot of work to fix them again. You have to chip off all that old stuff. So I don't see any advantage to it. Now this, well, the sand and clay expand and contract at the same rate as the bricks. So while I won't say you don't get any cracks, uh, you'll get very few cracks. What I like to do is build the stove and start to fire it while everything's kind of moist to dry it out. And what will happen is it will expand. Everything will expand at the same rate and you'll start to see maybe some cracks, but at that time you can smooth things out, smush things over, maybe put a little, you know, do your tucking and pointing. And I've had incredible results with really no cracks in the um, important parts of the stove where I do get cracks you know I'm building I've built mine on wood floors so I get cracks where I get some motion in the foundation which is my bad <laughs> try not to do that give yourself a firm foundation uh, so let's talk about the mix so I talk about I always talk about my clay sand mortar and I talk about a ratio of three to one and that's by dry volume and that's sand to clay. So what I like to do is just get a little scoop or something that is gonna give me a consistent measurement. Now let's talk about the materials real quick. The clay I've got here, I'll try not to rustle the bags, is, a, is Lincoln brand 60 fire clay, and I assume that's a 60 screen, uh, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but any brand of fire clay should work. And don't worry too much about it being, you know, if you're sourcing it from home, most clays I've found work. Now it should just look like a real fine, light colored powder. So there's the clay. And the sand, now you do want sharp, I'm trying to rustle the bag, sharp mason sand. So, you know, I, I specify silica sand. Um, this is a commercial grade quickcrete brand. So it's a concrete sand. And it says a medium grit sand for use in concrete and landscaping. But down here it says, contains silica and of course they're warning me not to breathe it so and I'm gonna not wear my mask while I do this video so if you're using silica sand you do want to wear a mask it does have the same kind of qualities as um, asbestos or any other sharp things that get in your lungs so do remember that so anyways ratio wise three to one so I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm just gonna go one and I'm gonna use about a third of one for my scoop of clay. So as you can see, it doesn't need to be super accurate. <laughs> okay, so from there you just add some water and you don't wanna get it too wet, but you do wanna get it so you can make, you know, obviously everything liquid enough to mix. Now in a um, setting where I was building the stove, I would be doing this in a five gallon bucket and I would have a paint stir or a mortar mix, mortar mixer on there. So, and even that little bit of water I added, that was too much. And that's fine. Because what I want to show you is a couple things actually. So, um, when I am 
sealing the glass tops or making any seals around the top. I like to make what I call sandcastle mix. And what that is, is that's still the same ratio of clay and sand, but more liquid. And that way you can do those little drip castles, you know, you guys probably made those on the beach, right? Um, and that's a great way to run a bead around where you're gonna set your glass top without building up too much thickness. So since I made it too wet, I'm just gonna go ahead and add, the, add some more materials at the same rate. So here I'm gonna add, oh, let's say that's roughly half of a scoop. And so a sixth of a scoop, maybe. And again, like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, if you have too much clay, you'll crack, okay? The clay expands and contracts quite a bit. The sand holds it together and adds the bite and fills in the gaps. The clay just forms sort of a thin skin all around all the little bits of sand in there. So you really want um, your mix to be close to three to one, but if you want to go in any direction, you kind of want it to be more sand. The only downside there is it just won't stick as well. It'll be real crumbly. So you don't want to get too eager and make too much of a clay mix. You'll know if you have too much sand because it won't stick to your bricks. Oh, so this looks great. So here's what we're looking for is a mortar that you can kind of toss around into a ball, form a form. You know, you could throw it up to a guy working on a high ladder if you needed to. But it's still liquid and real pliable, and this is about right for, for making the, for setting the bricks. You know, this will support the bricks, support their weight, not, not push out. That's a real nice mix, actually. So that's why I really like the clay and sand mortar mix. That's how you make it. Now, if you want to and you want it to harden up a little, you can add some screened ash from your wood stove, from your rocket stove. If you screen that so you get all the chunks out, and ideally it's mostly just the white fluff and it'll kind of uh, screen down to like a salt and pepper looking mix. If you mix a little bit of that in here, when I say a little bit, a little bit, I mean like maybe a tablespoon per the one of those scoops, you know, just a 20th of the clay or something like that. Just a tiny bit is all it needs. And, and that will help turn this into a little bit more of an active refractory. Um, and I don't, do not know the chemical process right now. It has something to do with the lye and the potassium in there, um, but don't ask me to break it down for you. So <clears throat> what it will do is help the mortar cure hard a little bit faster. I don't think it does a whole lot for you in the long run, but it does kind of speed things up a little bit, it seems to, and makes things cure a little harder in the, in the short time after you build the stove. Um, otherwise, it seems like it takes a while for that clay to really cure. So there you go, guys. There's my, the mortar mix. Um, I hope that was informative. I hope that helps. I was a little scattered. There's some logging going on up, right up there again, and I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, it's been bugging me. <laughs> so, um, like I said, hope that helps. And let me know if I can answer more questions for you. I really appreciate all you guys, all your questions, comments. And I've got to tell you one more time, I'm having a great time interacting with all you guys building stoves. So keep those questions coming. Keep those photos coming. Let me know what you think of my designs. And uh, let me know if I can do a design that, um, you know, something I haven't done yet. I've had, I had a few suggestions. But if there's something you, you've been looking for that you want plans for that you haven't seen, let me know. So, all right, guys. Hope you're having a great fall. And I'll see you soon.